Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. And one question I get asked a lot is, how do you get such nice grind lines? I'm by no means an expert on the subject, but there's a few things I've learned along the way that have really made a difference and helped improve my grinding process. So let's head over to the belt grinder and I'll show you five tips to grinding better bevels on your knives. All right, tip number one, and this might be the cheesiest tip you've ever heard, but I do believe it's the most important. And that is this, when you approach the grinder, you need to do it with complete confidence. You need to come up to the grinder and know that you're gonna own that grind. Yo, my, my, mine. Okay, maybe not like that, but you get the idea. If you come up to your grind and you start grinding your knives and you're all like nervous and timid and be like, oh, I sure hope this works, you're not gonna get a good result. That's just how it is. Even though if you've never really ground a lot of knives before and if it's a new uh, experience for you, I do believe that you know when you're trying something new, ignorance and confidence are the two keys to success. Uh, just have confidence. Just tell yourself, you know what, we're gonna make something great. We're gonna turn out a really nice bevel. We're gonna grind a nice knife. If you do that, that's the single most important thing and that's something that is continually renewed as well. Uh, even if you've ground 100 knives, you need to come up to your grinder and say, you know what, I know what I'm doing here, I'm gonna do it properly, and we're gonna do a really great grind on this bevel here. So that's my first tip, grind with confidence. All right, tip number two, belt selection. This has been huge for me and made just a massive impact on how I grind my knives. Now when I first started grinding I did what most people probably do and that's just buy aluminum oxide grinding belts and they're certainly useful, they do good things, but I will never let these belts touch a bevel of mine ever again. I don't know what it is about them. Uh, sometimes I think they kind of load up, they'll wear unevenly as compared to like a ceramic belt. Also, if you ever have any debris built up or you know your platen isn't quite perfect or something on your, your contact wheel, these things offer no forgiveness. They're so flexible that any slight imperfection translates straight to the bevel and I just, I, I, I can't stand doing bevels with aluminum oxides. Now I'll use these for like spine work and profiling and stuff like that and on handle shaping. Uh, they're definitely handy, I still buy these belts, but but I never grind bevels with aluminum oxide belts. Let me show you what I do use. I'll run you through my typical setup for grinding a bevel. So when I first start grinding, I like to use a really, really aggressive belt. Uh, this is my go-to belt for that. Uh, it's a Norton Blaze 36 grit. And the reason for that is that when you're first grinding your initial bevel, it's nice to be able to start your grind and complete the grind on the entire blade length before you have to stop because it's too hot, dip it in water to cool it down. And with a coarser belt, your blade will heat up less. You think of it as uh, the finer the belt, the more tiny little abrasives are gonna be in contact with the material, the more contact, the more friction, the more friction, the more more heat. So especially when you're getting those initial grinds put in and you're starting out, if you had a really fine belt or a finer belt that you that you had to stop because it got so hot, it'd be really intrusive. You know, you could like kind of start a grind and it gets too hot to hold, you'd have to dip it in water and then kind of continue that one. I find it really makes a big difference if I can just start a bevel and pull it all the way through without it getting too hot and I can hold on to the entire thing. Really, really makes a big difference. Also these ceramic ones, they're a lot more rigid than like aluminum oxides and some of the other belts. They really help keep a nice, flat, uh, rigid surface to work off of. After that, I will go to, uh, the, again, a ceramic belt. This is a Norton, this is a Norwax uh, X200. Uh, not a fine, fine belt, but definitely a lot finer. It really pulls all the really high marks out of the 36 grit. And typically, I'll finish everything up, clean it all up. I'll do like 90% of my grind with this, with a 36 grit and then the last 5-10% with this belt right here. And this is pretty much what I take it to uh, before heat treat. After heat treat, I'll come out and clean everything up with one of these 3M Trizac belts. These are a fairly new belt to me and I absolutely love them. They've got a lot of forgiveness in them, but they produce an incredible surface finish. So love, love, love these belts. Once that's all done, I'll come and grab some surface conditioning belts, and uh, this is a fine belt, and this is a super fine. Think of this as Scotch-Brite on a belt. Really, really does a great job of just putting a really nice satin finish on your bevels. Uh, I've been experimenting with a super fine lately, and I actually find that it actually loads up with material much worse than the fine. And so when it was brand new, it worked great, but after I used it for a few bevels, I was starting to get really weird lines and artifacts in there. So I've actually kind of gone away from using the super fine so much. And I pretty much clean everything up with just the fine surface conditioning belts. 
One more tip on belts. When I'm ordering my belts, like my staple belts, my go-to belts, what I like to do is I'll check wherever I'm ordering and see if they've got a type of belt that I've never used before. You know, I'll buy like one, maybe two of some type of belt just to try it out. You may find this belt is just gonna like up your grinding game and be like, wow, this is like my new go-to belt for this step of the process. You might find something that's like, well, you know what, that kind of sucked. I'm never gonna order that one again. But if you just try them out kind of one at a time, you'll really get a sense of all the different options that are out there. So that's one of the huge advantages of a 2x72 grinder is that there's so many different options for different belts and abrasives. If you're using smaller grinders like 1x30s, I mean, if that's all you have, just let it rip, keep going with it. But just know that you're typically constrained to like aluminum oxides and abrasives that are mostly probably designed for woodworking. But when you get into the big grinders, it's a nice to have all these different options. And that's why I'm saying tip number two is finding the right belt it makes a huge difference in your grinding. Tip number three is a bit of a contentious one and I don't really know why. Grinding jigs. You know what, when you're just getting into knife making, it can be very, very difficult to get nice consistent bevels put on. So why not use a grinding jig to get you started? I did, and a lot of people get all up in arms saying, oh, blah, 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 I don't know why. Like, really, come on, we're learning here. Uh, to do this jig, this was super simple. All I did was a piece of angle iron and I cut the top off so it wasn't so high. I drilled and tapped a 3 8 hole here, put a 3 8 bolt with a jam nut on there. And now I can move that bolt up and down and adjust the angle that I'm coming at my platen or my contact wheel. Keep in mind though, if you using a grinding jig, it's pretty much good for flat grinds and straight grinds. Uh, once you get into contact wheels and different curves and stuff like that, this is not going to do you any good. I don't do any grinding with the jig anymore. I've gone strictly freehand and I actually get way better grinds now that I'm doing it freehand. And since then, I've actually tried going back to a jig and even, uh, you know, a perfectly straight grind, I'll come to my jig and I just can't get as good a job as I can freehand now. And it, I think it's just a certain disconnect. When you're grinding freehand, you're very, very connected. You feel exactly what's happening. When you're using a jig, it's all kind of translated through the jig and keep that in mind. You, you don't have a true sense, a true feel of what's happening when you're using a grinding jig. But by all means, if you wanna start grinding knives and you're having a difficult time freehand, use a jig. A one tip, if you wanna get away from using jigs and the way that I did it, was I would start my initial bevel with the jig, kind of put it in there fairly heavy, go like 50% of the way, and then take the jig away and finish the rest up freehand. At least that way you've got your bevel started, you've got a reference point to start off of, and that really helped me when I wanted to get away from using jigs. Helped me get into freehand grinding, and now it's, I just love freehand grinding, but jigs, totally okay. And another type of grinding jig, I use this one all the time still, is a plunge line jig. All this is is two pieces of 01 tool steel. I've drilled and tapped a quarter inch thread on the one side and just drilled a quarter inch hole in the other. And then I've not heat treated this because I wanted to have a little bit of flex in it. And essentially once I bolted it together, I took it to my flat platen and ground it perfectly flat. And now what you can do is simply put your blade through here, clamp this down, and as you're grinding, you've got a stop. So you can get your plunge lines on both sides, stopping at the exact same point. And again, when I'm using this, I'll typically kind of rough it in get about like 50% of the way then I'll take this off and finish it up freehand but it's really nice really quickly and accurately establish very consistent plunge lines from one side of the blade to the other so tip number three grinding jigs no issues with those whatsoever all right guys, tip number four. Now we're actually getting to some of the technique. Um, one thing that's helped me a lot is the way that I think about my platen or my contact wheel. I now think of these as a work rest or a work surface, a place to work from, rather than just the work rest that comes on the machine. And what I mean by that is that, say if you're getting into your grind and you know, I need to bring this bevel up a little higher. Rather than just kind of coming out of here and taking a blind stab, what I will do is I'll bring the entire bevel up to it, get the whole thing resting nicely, uh, gently. Now I've got a starting point. Now now this is where I'm going to work from. So if I want to grow that bevel, what I'll do is I'll hit there, get it all even, and just apply a little rotational pressure. I'm going to exaggerate this obviously, but I'll basically come like this, all the while keeping this firmly pressed against the contact wheel or platen, whatever you're using. What that does is it allow you to grow the bevel and maintain this exact same radius or the exact same flat plane if you're on a flat platen, and it just keeps that bevel uh, even the entire way. Same thing if I've got my bevel high enough but I need to thin out my edge a bit, I'll bring it here, touch it there, boom, I've got my datum point, I've got the place where I'm gonna start from and I'm never gonna leave that place essentially, I'm just gonna adjust and twist a little bit either way from there. So I can twist it this way, obviously exaggerating here again, but now I can bring it like that, I'll thin out my edge and keep this same even bevel all the way across. Really, really makes a huge difference when you're grinding your knives.
All right, guys, last tip we're gonna wrap it up with is a finishing tip. Now, when I'm trying to finish up my bevels and you know you want a really nice transition, you want this nice sweeping plunge line in here, what I will do is I'll run my belt intentionally off-centered, like off the edge of the wheel or flat platen. Uh, right now, I'm about a quarter of an inch off. Sometimes I'll even go up to three-eighths of an inch depending on how much sweep I want in that transition. But it really allows you to just start blending this and bringing these parts together here. So we come from our bevel, really nice sweep transition to this flat part, and it just really helps it gives a little bit of forgiveness, a little bit of cushion there, and you can just gently blend things together like that. Obviously, switching the different sides of the wheel for the different bevels that you're working on. But this is a really, really handy tip, and this allows you to do some really, really nice finishing work. And one of the more difficult areas, cleaning up this transition right here. All right, and to wrap it up, just remember that there is no substitution for practice, practice, practice. If you want to grind better knives, grind more knives. I an emailed the other day from a gentleman and he said, uh, I ground my very first knife today and it sucked. My bevel sucked. What do I do? And I kind of just felt like saying, dude, welcome to the club. Uh, the more knives you grind, the better you get at grinding. And that's just how it is. And that's also the beauty about knife making is that whichever, with every single knife you make, you get a little bit better in the future. So hopefully some of these tips will help you guys out. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. You find them useful. Do you have other tips to add? Go ahead and leave them in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And I'm going to leave a few other random videos up in here for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.